Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy, Cold Blue Opinions, coming back at you. Another one is opinions coming from his motherfucking bunker. Now we're going to be talking about Tommy Fury. We're going to be talking about Jake Poole and basically who I think will win. After going over it in my head a little bit, I'm going to just say it outright. I think Tommy Fury probably loses, but it depends on him what he decides to do. I think that he can win and he can win this while looking pretty, pretty good, you know, but I think the thing is, and I, I, I'm pretty sure this is what Jake Paul is, is banking on. You see Kobe right there. I'm pretty sure this is what Jake Paul is banking on is that Tommy Fury doesn't take this sport as seriously. Now, when you look at like the technical aspects, there are openings that Jake Paul could capitalize on and get the knockout with. Anthony Taylor was able to capitalize on it uh, pretty easily as well. What that is, is that Tommy Fury makes this mistake that a lot of newer people make in boxing, which is, you know, you drop that lead hand when you're throwing your right hand, or maybe just sometimes you drop it when you're getting pressure because, I don't know, maybe you think you want to be like Floyd Mayweather, you want to do a Philly show, but you, you're not fully committing to it, and it's like just kind of a reaction at this point that you dropping your hand instead of you doing the Philly shell, and your hand is just down there, and it, sometimes that happens. It happens, bro, and I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, this happens to me sometimes, whether it happened to me yesterday, actually. I was sparring, and I slipped to throw an uppercut. I missed the uppercut because I misgaged the range. And a guy threw an overhand right. He landed it because I dropped his hand on the uppercut. Right? I thought I was safe too. I was not safe. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I was good, but I, I was not good. You know, and it's sometimes people. I don't do this as much when I'm getting pressured, but I used to. And when I would get pressured, I like drop my hand and sort of like I don't know, think I was framing out, but then lower it I, I don't know what the fuck i think i was trying to come from like maybe throw a uh like a flicker jab or like a, a a sort of like stabbing upwards jab but i never i don't know what the fuck it's just a weird reaction some people just have it man and tommy fury has this reaction and when he would get pressured by um anthony taylor maybe he was trying to counter with a hook of sorts maybe he's trying to counter with something and anthony taylor hit him before he can get the shot off and yeah but anthony taylor would keep on landing the overhand right because it was there because he would keep dropping his hand. And we know Jake Paul, his biggest punch is that overhand right. That's his bread and butter. I'm pretty sure that's what, his, that's what his coaches see in the holes in Tommy's game. I'm pretty sure that's what Jake sees in the holes in Tommy's game. And they're like, look, you can capitalize on that easily. And if you keep landing that, I don't know how much of those shots he can, he can take. And if you get a knockdown, you got a 10-8. You just make the fight so much easier for you. You pretty much just round, won two rounds in one. So... You know, that, that you get that knockdown. I'm, I, I like your odds to be able to get it. Now, that, now that's, that's the, the first aspect. Now, if Tommy Fury can fix that, and let's say that he doesn't get caught too much, he has the ability to, to be able to close the distance as well, but he will smother his work a little bit. But he can fight off the back foot. He can keep you at range with the jab. It's just sometimes when he decides to do the power shots, he leans in, smothers his own work, and... You know, he's kind of like in this stalemate clinch position where he can't do anything, his opponent can't do anything, right? We know that Jake Paul is very willing to hold and he's very willing to clinch up to prevent you from doing anything. So we're probably going to see a good a good amount of that in their fight. And Tommy Fury, his punches are smoother than Jake Paul's. He's a lot more fluid in, than Jake Paul with his technique. But he does not have the sting or the power behind his shots. So he's really going to have to sticky move. He's really going to have to move around. And I think he has decent footwork and he's going to be able to work. He's going to move in the ring a lot better than anybody that Jake Paul has faced. And I think that this fight is more than likely going to be uh, not an easy one for Jake. It could end up being first round knockout. I mean, anything could happen. But I think more than likely, because I don't bank on a knockout exactly happening. I think more than likely, it's going to be a competitive, it's going to be a difficult fight, and Jake Paul's going to have to find those shots. And I think if he finds those shots, he can hurt Tommy Fury. I don't know about a knockout, but maybe, maybe. You know, I mean, Anthony Taylor was able to hurt him. Anthony Taylor is smaller than, than uh, Tommy Fury is. But this is going to be a fight where Jake Paul is more than likely going to be held at bay by someone with, I believe, longer reach than him, because Tommy Fury has some orangutan fucking arms. And is going to be using that jab. And Jake Paul's going to have to get in. And he's going to have to fight a little bit more dirty and bring the fight to him. Now, here's where it sort of falls apart for Tommy Fury. Is that he does not take this sport that seriously. And that's very unfortunate for him. Because he can win this fight if he takes it seriously. But he doesn't. And we saw in Jake Paul's last fight that 
carrying into the later rounds, he's, he's looking good in the later rounds now. He wasn't before. His cardio was, was, was not that great. But now in the later rounds in a six-round fight against Anderson Silva, he was lasting pretty well, and his power still translated in the later rounds, as we see with the, knock, the knockdown of Anderson Silva. Tommy Fury, if he isn't fresh for all those rounds, that's not going to work very well for him. Because then once you let Jake Paul start to let loose on you with those power shots, I don't know if there's anyone out there who can just keep on taking power shots from Jake Paul when they're tired. You know what I mean? It's, Jake Paul does, I mean, he hits hard. I used to think he didn't hit hard uh, earlier, like probably like a year or two ago. I, I used to think that, and I don't think his power was that great when he first started YouTube boxing, but he's developed his power pretty well. You know, I, I got to give it to him because his power was not that great before, but he's he's developed it pretty well. It's came along. Maybe it's some timing that comes with it too, but he's developed himself to be able to become a power puncher, which is very impressive. Now, steroids, I don't know. But he's developed himself in one way or another. So we're looking at Tommy Fury. His best bet, his key to victory is keeping Jake Paul on the outside. It is bring generalship, being able to control Jake Paul with his, his footwork, being able to control Jake Paul with his feints, keeping Jake Paul at, at, at bay, gauging his reactions, and pretty much controlling everything as much as possible, countering him and punishing him, being the first person to be able to actually punish him when he throws those big looping shots and misses, right? Because when Jake Paul misses on those shots, his footing's all off, he's out of position really badly, his hands are not in the right place, he's very vulnerable. But is Tommy Fury gonna do it? I don't know. And if he punishes him, how bad is the punishment gonna be? Is he gonna be able to really hurt him? I don't think so. So even, he's gonna have to be on point. His reflex is gonna have to be on point. He's going to have to make Jake Paul pay, mix up his targets pretty well. But, I mean, I'm not too worried about that. Just don't headhunt Jake Paul too much. Use footwork. Use a jab. He's capable of doing all these things. But it just depends on him and if he's going to put in the work and take this seriously enough. I think that he should. And I think his, his family needs to get on his fucking ass to be like, hey, man, you're not going to fucking go out there and embarrass us. You embarrass us. We're going to, I don't know, fuck you up or, I don't know, disown you or something. I don't know. Tell him something to really, like, put fire to his fucking heels like hey, hey yo dude we're not playing with you and what jake paul needs to do is get inside of his range get inside of his range be a, be as much of a bully as possible you know he's probably not gonna be able to hurt you that badly with his with his punches he doesn't seem to have that great of power look for that overhand right mix it up to the body to to encourage him dropping his hands even more because we know he's willing to drop his hands so encourage that by going to his body working the body working rear hooks uh rear right hand hooks crosses to the body jab cross to the body mixing up the targets and we know jake paul can do that and he will do that and more than likely they're going to do that and then letting that overhand right go also the left hook will be there at times so setting that up that's going to be his his key to victory thanks getting inside body work fighting dirty tiring out tommy fury outlasting him and looking for those power shots that are going to be there because you're going to create those opportunities via your feints and your your tactics that's going to be the key to victory to both of them which one do i think is more likely to be able to to get it off i'm gonna to have to bank on jake just because tommy fury isn't taking it seriously if tommy fury was serious about this and he was passionate about this i think that he could win this fight i think that he can you know but he's not if he's not going to take it seriously then what's the point i mean his last opponent he, he we saw in a video he, they were telling him to go light because tommy fury wasn't in shape and he wasn't he wasn't taking it seriously and then we see with anthony taylor the commission wouldn't allow tommy fury to go beyond four rounds i believe anthony taylor wants to go six the commission was like no we can't let him go longer than four rounds and tommy fury was talking about banking on getting a pretty much a, a knockout he didn't get a knockout on anthony taylor who's a smaller fighter and he actually got hurt by him this is stuff that he should not be doing. When you're training with the Furies, when you're training with Tyson Fury, the greatest heavyweight boxer in the world right now, there should be no excuses as to why you cannot finish Anthony Taylor. Or even your last guy, why you shouldn't be in shape. Like, you know, I think that he his priorities right now is just not boxing. He doesn't want to do that. He, he does it so he can make money. He's probably one of his main sources of income, probably his best source of income, maybe only. 
and he needs to make make some money from these fights so that he can go fuck off fuck some models or travel the world to do some bullshit or whatever maybe he owes money to people i don't fucking know but it's pretty clear that he's not taking this seriously and he has his eyes set on doing other things outside of boxing more than doing boxing so jake paul right now he's hungry he wants this more than tommy fury and a lot of the times it that's what it comes down to these two are comparable in terms of their skills in terms of athleticism i don't know who's better i mean maybe i, I have no clue maybe i'd say they're kind of even from what i can tell but jake paul's just a hungrier guy and i think that that's going to be the difference in this fight i'm sorry like i can't give you like the i gave you the tangibles as much as possible what they need to do but there's no guarantee on like what who is going to do because it's all up to tommy fury at the end of the day this is his fight to lose but i think he's gonna lose it because he's just not taking it seriously but i don't want to keep talking in circles let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and i'm out peace